We are joined now by Wake Forest, and we have with us head coach Jen Hoover and senior guard Amber Campbell. Um, and coach, let's just sort of start recapping last season. Um, 16 and 16 overall went to the WNIT tournament, but the injury bug was sort of, I think, the hardest, most challenging thing about last season. But um, how did that affect the way that you managed game to game with so many players going down early for you guys? Well, last year was uh, was a challenge at times, but I have to give credit to our players because they never stopped believing in each other. And, and no matter who was available that night, they were going to give us everything they had. And so, you know, it was challenging, especially for our guards, um, because we were very limited in the guard position for a while. We really only had three healthy guards. And that's tough, um, no matter who you're playing, no matter what night you're playing. Um, but again, they never complained. They just kind of went out there, and even if they called for a timeout, I just looked uh, I, sub. I just looked the other way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, Reagan Branch, Destiny Walker, Courtney Simmons, some of those who were injured last year, but will be back this year. How impactful will they be now? Hopefully, full strength. Well, I think that'll be very impactful. We've got we've got a lot of different diverse uh, versatility, and we've got a lot of um, a lot of pieces to the puzzle, if you will. And when we're healthy, it it gives us a lot of uh, flexibility and. You know, Reagan is super excited to be back on the court. You know, she tore her Achilles two weeks into preseason last year. So, you know, and, and really hasn't had a chance to, to play in the ACC yet. And um, she's she was our first post player to kind of pass the conditioning test and was ready to go and has just been gung-ho. And then uh, she had a little minor setback with some mono, but uh, she'll be over that. She, You know, that, that was a good time to get that knocked out of the way. Um, you know, Courtney Simmons is one that I've, I've felt a little bit for. You know, I couldn't give you a kid that's probably been more resilient. Uh, she has gone through a lot with the, with the broken foot, but she still has a lot of goals, and she's working hard to getting um, back on the court and wants to be out there with these guys. So, And then Destiny Walker right now is, is in practice um, playing like a, a woman on a mission. Um, she's just so happy to be able to be out there, and she has brought a lot of a lot of versatility to our team that we kind of, you know, her freshman year we saw it on and off a little bit, um, but she kind of was in and out with the health issues that year, and then um, last year being out all year with surgery. So super excited to have all, all, you know, all three of those guys back ready to go this year. Yeah, and in addition, you're returning your top three scores and Elisa Pena, Ariel Stevenson, and Amber Campbell, four of your five starters. Um, how will that kind of give you the ability to build on last year with that veteran group? Well, I think that group, um, they, they kind of know, they've been through the rigors of college athletics, and they know night in and night out you have to be ready to go. And, you know, they bring a lot of confidence. They, they, they also know and understand that they don't, as an individual, have to take a bad shot because the kid sitting next to them is a very capable scorer. And I think they're very unselfish, almost to a fault at times. So we do have to talk to them a little bit about that. That's where those, some of those turnovers come in. Um, but with that, with that group kind of leading the way, they've just been able to raise the level of confidence and the level, you know, we've kind of set a bar this year that we said we're not going to accept anything below it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's what this group's able to do. Day-to-day, -day, they're able to say, guys, we got to raise it. we got to keep raising it. We can't just be satisfied. Yeah. And for Amber, how does um, Courtney Simmons coming back, I know that kind of allows you to be a little bit more aggressive, but what's that dynamic like between you guys and, and with her coming back, what will that be like? Um, actually, it would be really great. Uh, me and Courtney have like a great bond with each other. Uh, it gives me some lead way um, on the wing and for her to be in charge, you know, directing traffic. Um, also, <laughs> I'm very excited to have her on the court. Um, yeah. How did you, from a player's perspective, um, having to deal with sort of that injury bug where you were just, you had to give a lot more last year, um, how did that impact your role? And then how do you think going through that adversity will pay off for you guys this year? I think it impacted my role a lot. Um, for me, point guard position was not my thing. Um, I felt like I've worked really hard on my game as running the point and directing everyone. And also, I was more of control. I had the ball in my hand um, at being the point guard even though at the time, like as a freshman, um, I was kind of being thrown at the walls <laughs> as a point guard, but I actually learned from my experience to be more confident in myself um, when directing traffic, so. Yeah. And for you, Coach, I mean, when you see a player um, like Amber have to take on those responsibilities, um, 
out of necessity. How, I mean, how do you think her court vision and awareness, even if she's not playing at the point guard position, impacts the way that she plays in a guard position? Well, I think that's one of the thing, things that's great about Amber. You know, when she came in as a freshman, we did we had to swing her over, and she was kind of like a second and third string point guard for us. So she got a little bit at it. And each year, she just got more and more confident at it. And I think it opens up a different vision for you. And, and she understands and respects even more so what a point guard, just what it does entail, mm -hmm. how much more advanced thinking they have to have, like a quarterback on a, on a, on a court. And, you know, I think now watching her in practice and watching her take our freshman point guard under her arm, Gina Conti from uh, Grove City, Ohio, she's able to talk to her and do things now that I wouldn't have seen a couple of years ago because she really had to take that ownership of that last year, and she really did it in a, in a great way for us. Yeah. Alex Sharp, uh, another player um, coming back, ACC All-Freshman Honors last year, she had a lot of playing experience as just a freshman. How do you anticipate all of that experience to pay off for her in her sophomore year? Well, Alex is, uh, Alex is an elite level athlete when she came to us from Australia. She played, she had been training in their center of excellence and, and this summer won a gold medal in the World University Games. And, you know, she just, she has a lot of confidence in her game. She wants to take it to the next level. She's a kid that always has done a lot of goal setting and is very driven. And I think, you know, having all the playing time she experienced and she she now knows what to expect. She wants to be more than just a kind of glue player that, you know, so at points last year I think people would have thought she was. But, uh, you know, she hits a game-winning three at Carolina. And, you know, I think Alex knows that she can do that more often. It, she just has to continue to kind of now as, an, you know, a returning player um, be more confident in that. Yeah. Um, you're losing Milan Quinn, uh, who's the leading rebounder last year. Who do you anticipate to kind of fill that role? Well, losing Milan is, was, is, is kind of one of those things for two years now. We've counted on her to be a double-double. And so now all of a sudden, you know, it was Dierica Hamby before Milan mm -hmm. Quinn. And then it was Milan Quinn for two years. And Milan's over in Germany now playing and putting up double-doubles again. So the, no surprise there. You know, I think we've got a core group that's going to do that. I will say that right now in practice, Alex Sharp is doing it. You know, she is on a mission on the board. She averaged just under seven a game, I think, for us last year. She wants to increase that. You know, we've got a core of, of post players, uh, Tyra Whitehead who's a sophomore for us, is, is doing a great job in practice on a day-to-day -day basis with that. Um, Ana Uda and Reagan Branch, both other sophomores. Well, Reagan will be a freshman this year. You know, both, all 6'3", six, 6'4", six, they are capable of that. Um, and I will tell you, Lisa Pena knows and wants to be a better rebound for, for rebounder for us this year. That's something she s talked about at the end of last year. And she's such an offensive threat and spends so much time on the perimeter. It's just a matter of her, you know, remembering that she, she has that potential and ability to go to the boards for us. So I think it'll be a collective group that kind of, um, you know, we've been, that's one, been one of our strong points is rebounding for the last few years as far as in the top of the conference in those categories. And we talk about it daily. It has to be something we continue. And we're going to turn this one loose back on the boards again, which I think she's really excited about. As a point guard, she ended up having to get back a lot. Yeah. But now that she'll be able to swing back to the wing and our point guards are back, she'll get it, be able to get back in there. And you now as a freshman, she averaged almost five rebounds a game. So. Um, Elisa Pena, one of the players um, who had some international playing experience this summer along with Alex Sharp and uh, one of your freshmen, Ivana Ratza. Um, how much do you think they've all played for different national teams this summer? How do you think um, that international experience will be a benefit for them this year? Uh, I think it's huge for us. Um, you know, Elisa had the opportunity. She, she was selected to, to the Italian senior national team. And just the practices and the camp and everything that she went through, um, she's just come back and she was already a phenomenal player, but she's, she just, she continues to drive confidence from that. She has big goals. All three of those have goals of playing on their Olympic teams one year. And, um, you know, for all three to play this summer and, and get that competition against other great players across Europe and across the world, um, you know, we're thrilled. You know, Alex, like I said, won a gold. Ivana won a silver. And then Elisa's wasn't in that kind of a competition. It wasn't a, a medal type situation. But they all three come back and had played at elite level all summer long. And, you know, now the concern a little bit with them is making sure they got a break at some point mm -hmm. so that they're not going to end up with some sort of nagging injuries or something late. Yeah. Tell us about um, the freshmen, three freshmen that you have that you're bringing in. Um, what are you expecting their impact to be this season? Well, we're really excited about our freshmen, and, and all three bring a lot of a lot 
of different things to the table. Um, Gina Conte is a point guard, uh, an old school point guard, pass first point guard, loves to play in the open court, loves to push the ball, um, outgoing, talks all the time, just a lot of fun to be around. Uh, I don't know that she's ever met a stranger. And, you know, just a kid that we're super excited to see in the black and gold this year. And I think our fans will love watching her play. And I know her teammates love playing with her. Uh, Ivana Ratza from Serbia via Greece a little bit um, is a fun kid. She's um, she, she, she just got here in August and has just fit in immediately. Part of that is she's Gina's roommate, so she now has not met any strangers and knows everyone. Um, but she's a versatile, kind of typical international kid. Like I, she's, a lot, she's a mixture, I would say, of an Elisa and an Alex. Uh, can play facing, can play the basket, knows how to play the game, hits open shots, moves without the basketball, uh, has a little fiery passion to her that we really like, and she's, she's a lot of fun to be around as well. And then we have a post player from Arizona, Maya Banks, who is a strong physical kid that finishes inside. Um, she's finishing against some of our scout guys that have typically been able to kind of aggravate our freshmen a little bit until you kind of figure out, and it hasn't phased her at all in that aspect of it. And she's a little quiet out of the group, so she's they're all three very different, but they're a fun group as a whole. They bring a lot of, a lot of excitement and a lot of uh, character to the team. Yeah. Um, and you're also adding, in addition to freshmen, two new assistant coaches this year. Um, Jermaine Woods coming from ODU and Lisa Sermignano coming from Wagner College. What have they sort of brought to your staff? Yeah, really excited about our new staff. I mean, I, I've been very blessed. I've had great great assistant coaches and great people work for me that have gone on and and you know it's always hard to lose staff members but it's also I think sometimes it's a good thing um, you know we've had a lot of new energy uh, new emphasis new you know the players here people say something just a little bit different and uh, you know I think right now we're, our staff has done a great job of you know, really encompassing our kids and pouring into them and investing in them daily and, and really getting to know each other. And I think that's been a fun thing to watch for a head coach that's been there now is to watch those interactions and, and how welcoming my players were and how, how it's just been a great, um, you know, kind of a great movement forward for us, I would say. Yeah, and Amber, for you, sort of how has it been bringing in three, three freshmen, two new assistant coaches? What has the transition like been um, um, with the new faces? Actually, it's been an easy transition to me. Um, I like the, our new coaching staff right at this moment. And also the freshmen, they've been doing really well, have uh, good chemistry and bonding with each other. And they're bringing a lot to the table right now. So they're doing really well. Great. Do we have any questions? Got one right here. Bring. Oh, we'll go back corner first. Hello there, uh, Jason Brown, Spectrum News here in Charlotte. And this question can be for either of you, but when you have a preseason player candidate like Penna, how do you balance allowing her to do what she can do on the court, help lead this team, be the be a, be a focal point from an offensive standpoint, versus? making sure that not everyone is standing around, giving her the ball and just watching. You know, do you understand what I'm trying to get at, Coach? Sure. Uh, I, I think um, one of the things that is, is, you know, remarkable about Elisa, first of all, she's one of the most humble kids I've ever coached. Um, when she made her senior national team, she texted me and she was in shock. And it didn't surprise me at all. Um, she's just, and, and Amber can attest to this, like she's not – She's not a me kid in any way, shape, or form. Um, actually, she's one that we have to kind of tell her she's not taking enough shots at times. She's not being selfish enough. But I think the beauty of our team is that we had three, three returners that were averaging double digits for between that 10 and 14 points a game. And that each one of our players on our team, any given night, don't really care on their individual stats as long as we come out with the win. Um, and, and I think on any given night, any of those three and probably a couple more could go for 20. And so our offense is built with a lot of motion into it to a lot of uh, a lot of equal opportunity. And, and that they know that. And like I was saying earlier, they know that if I don't have to take a contested, a contested shot, because if I pass it to my teammate to my left who's open, that's an open shot for a very good player. One more right here. Hi, Steve Phillips, ACC.com for coach or Amber. I'm Looking at the schedule, it says here you will play 15 games against opponents that were in postseason play last year. Talk about how a veteran squad prepares you to tackle that, but also maybe not resting on your laurels or taking anything for granted as you look at that schedule there. 
Uh, well, yeah, I, you know, when we put our schedule together, we, we felt like we're, we're a team coming off of back-to-back -back, uh, WNITs, and, you know, we're ready. To, we want to make that next jump. We, you know, we, we want to be that the next Wake Forest team to go to the NCAA tournament. So our, our emphasis in our schedule was to, to play postseason tournament teams so that night in and night out we were getting challenged with what it was going to take. And, you know, I think as a veteran squad, this team now has been through two NITs. They understand what that is. They understand – you know, that night in and night out, you have to, you can't have an off game. You just can't, not in this conference and not in our non-conference schedule. And, and that's what we purposely did. And, and, you know, Amber Campbell knows she's got one more shot at it. And so she's able in that locker room to talk about that and to talk about, it's about the name on our jersey. We've got to bring what Wake Forest basketball means. And, and we're the only ones that really know what that means to us. And that's different every single year. And this group is really putting a lot together on that. We read a book this summer called Pound the Stone. And they bring a lot of stuff back to that. It's a book by Joshua Medcalf. And we talk about pounding that stone and that, you know, every day is going to matter. Great. Any other questions? Well, that wraps it up for us. Thank, Thank you. you, Coach. Thank you, Amber.